Welcome back, YouTube friends and family, to our prayer series. Today is going to be a very, very powerful topic, and there are a lot of powerful scriptures that the Lord has laid on my heart for you and me. So let us go into it with prayer and end with prayer. Lord, we just thank you so much for all that you're doing in our lives throughout this, these weeks, Lord, and in these prayer videos. We just thank you for this time that we have together, Lord, in, the, in this series to just grow in our prayer life, Lord, and, and in our understanding of its importance in everything that we do. We thank you for growing us, Lord, in your scripture and in your word and in your examples of what prayer should be, Father. And thank you for being with us, Lord, and carrying us through and guiding us in every day. And Lord, I just pray for all of those out there watching, Lord, that right now they would feel your presence in their room. Know that you are watching over them and protecting them, that you are there caring for them, Father, and speaking to them through these scriptures, Lord, and through prayer. Lord, I just pray that they would just feel your gentle touch on their shoulder, Father, to know that you are right there with them. Lord, that you want to speak to them. Open their hearts and their ears and their minds to be receptive to your word, Lord, to grow in their knowledge of you and in the knowledge of their importance in prayer and that communication with you. Lord, strengthen us, Lord, each and every day for the things that are in each day, Father, and guide us, Lord, to take things one day and one step at a time in your word and help us, Lord, to have patience, Lord, in knowing that your timing is best for every situation. And so as we go into these scriptures, Lord, and into prayer, we just pray that you would speak to each and every one of us, Lord, touch our hearts and our minds. Help us to not just listen, but to think deeply, Lord, about all of our circumstances and situations, Lord, and how you are moving, even when sometimes we don't see it, Lord. Help us to try and just take time to think back, Lord, and to see the small things that, Lord, you are moving in. And we just pray all of these things in your name. Amen. So today, our theme is going to be taking things one day at a time. And so this says, take things one day at a time, one step at a time, um, one, one step at a time, and remembering that all things happen in God's time, not in mine. And so there's this um, saying that I'm sure every one of you knows, and it just came to my remembrance. Um, and it's, it's the footprints story. And so I'll read it to you. One night I had a dream. I was walking along the beach with the Lord and across the sky flashed scenes from my life. In each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. And to my surprise, I noticed that mine, many times along the path of life, there was only one set of footprints. And I noticed that it was during the lowest and saddest times in my life. I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there is only one set of footprints. I don't understand why you left my side when I needed you most. The Lord said, my precious child, I never left you. During your times of trial, where you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Now that's powerful. Because in every time and every season of our life, sometimes we get so caught up in all that we're doing to try and bring ourselves back to some sense of normality that we get blindsided by all the things that the Lord is doing in our lives. And that a lot of times we're seeing all that we're doing, 
But in actuality, we aren't doing anything. It's the Lord working. He's carrying us through. And that's what's so amazing about that footprint story. And it's one that I take to heart. Just remember that in these trials, when it feels like there's only one set of footprints in the stand, in the sand, and only one person working in the situation, remember it's not you, it's the Lord, and He's carrying you. You're seeing His footprints, you're seeing His trail, and His work in everything and every situation that you're going through. And so with that, let's go into scripture. Matthew 6, 25-34 Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap, or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Now for me... If I could add a single hour to my life by worrying, I would probably live to 221 years. I don't know about you, but that would be me. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we wear, or what shall we drink? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, and listen to this part, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Let us remember that in Matthew, where in our Bibles we read the red letters, that is Jesus talking. Jesus is telling you, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. So why are we worrying about tomorrow? For tomorrow will have worries of itself, but today has enough worry and trial and tribulation in it that we need to focus on putting in the Lord's hands. And so if Jesus is telling you to not worry about tomorrow, then that's what we need to do. We need to come together in prayer and lay down everything that we have at his feet and trust in him to know that he has our tomorrow in his hands and all he wants us to do is focus on today. Because even within today, we have no strength to change or do anything. We have no strength at all, which is why we need to focus on today because we need to give everything to God because it is by his strength and his might that we can do anything. So when it comes to bills and when it comes to tests and schoolwork, when it comes to regular jobs, all these things, give it to God and know that he is in control. He will take care of the things of tomorrow, next week, next year. All he wants us to do is focus on the little small thing of today. Isn't that such a good, good father? For us to know that there are so many things in our future that we have to face, but that our Father is there working, and all He wants us to do is worry about this and focus on this small little thing. And even in the small little thing, He wants us to focus on it so that we can give it back to Him. So really, the Lord wants us to worry about nothing. The only thing that we have to do is pray, read His Word, and trust Him. And have faith that he has our tomorrow in his hands. And all we have to do is focus on our today. Let us go to Exodus 16.4 where we see what the, um, the Lord was saying to the Israelites as well. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. 
So even here, throughout the Bible, we we read about so many scriptures where the Lord tells us that he will provide for us daily. Here, it says that the Lord wanted the Israelites to go out each day to gather their manna. Manna is the bread from heaven. He wanted them to go out each day to gather what they needed for that day for themselves. He didn't say, go out and gather a certain rate for the next week or two weeks or month. You know, go gather all that you can. Whatever you can fit in your house, just go grab it because you're going to need it. And we don't know the next time that the Lord's going to provide for us. No, in this, the Lord wanted to test their faith. He wanted to prove to them that he would provide for them daily. That they didn't need to worry about and take things upon themselves to have this provided for them, but then to say, no, I'm going to take it all because I need to make sure that I have something for tomorrow and next week. The Lord wanted them to only take what they needed for the day because as it said in Matthew, each day has enough worry and trouble in its own. And the Lord wants us to have faith that he once again has our tomorrow in his hands and have faith that he will provide for us daily minute by minute, hour by hour. Take things one step at a time, one day at a time. Because when you do, there's so much less worry. There's so much more certainty. And you feel so much greater and you have joy and peace about every circumstance that you walk into. And so what I want you to do right now is I want you to think back to a moment where you felt that there was a lot of uncertainty. Think back to a moment where it was the hardest trial that you faced so far in your life. How did the Lord deliver you from that? Write down right now each and every step that he took that you can remember him taking to deliver you from that. What was it? Did he for your rent? Did he have people donate for you or give money for you? For school, did he help you with your tests one time, one test at a time till you came to your final and you succeeded? With work, did he give you the peace each and every day that you needed to work around your coworkers who might have been a little troublesome? Write down and think about one moment. It doesn't have to be 20 moments. Just one instance in your life. And I really want you to do this. Write it down and write out the steps that you can remember the Lord taking and delivering you from that. Because then you can have that as a memory of how he delivered you from that. And he can deliver you from this situation. And it most likely won't be the same, but he will deliver you in a mighty way. All we have to do is trust that he will provide for us in today. In Lamentations 3, 22 to 23, it says, It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord's mercies are new every morning. His compassion will not fail. In Lamentations, it's saying that the Lord's mercies, they are new every morning. The mercy that we got from God yesterday was specific for yesterday. The mercy that we'll get for him tomorrow is specific for that day. But focus on the mercies that he has for us in this day, where he gives us what we don't deserve and holds back what we do deserve through mercy and grace. So he holds back all of the things that we do deserve to get. He doesn't give those to us. But what he does give to us is all the things that we don't deserve. That's his mercy. And his mercies are new every day. And now we're going to go into Matthew 6, 11. Give us this day our daily bread. This was a scripture that... If you remember, we went through in the last video talking about um, the, the model of prayer that Jesus did. Give us this day our daily bread is one of them. And within that, the Lord is telling us 
to pray that the Lord would provide for us in today. Because if we worry about tomorrow and think about tomorrow, we can't be there. We can't change it. We can't do anything in it. But today, there is something we can do. We can get on our knees, pray and seek God, and give all of our worries and troubles of today to Him. And this next one is very powerful. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Psalm 46.10 Take from this that the Lord wants us to be still and know who he is. Can you do that? Can we do that? Can we be still and trust God in every situation? Is that something that we're capable of? I want us to, to just trust the Lord in being still. And let us go into prayer about all of these scriptures and all that the Lord has spoken to us about. Lord, we just thank you so much for your word, for how you speak, Lord, so deeply to each and every heart and ear listening. We thank you for all that you have said to us, Lord, through these scriptures. And Lord, we thank you for showing us that you just want us to take things one day at a time, to trust you with all of our being, every atom in our body, to trust you, Lord, to bow down and submit to your will and your way, and most importantly, your timing. Father, because there are times when you will tell us what you have in store for us. And we get so excited and we want it now. But if we take it now, Lord, it won't be as good as it would have been if we did it in your timing. So help us to just remember to take things one day at a time in your timing, Father. To trust you in every area, in every situation in our lives. And Lord, as each and every one of us as we end, end this video and finish with this prayer, Lord, as we go and take one memory from our past of a situation that you worked in a mighty way, and we write it down, Lord, and we write down how we remember you delivering from us from that, I just pray that that would speak volumes into our hearts, Lord, to bring up those memories and to know that, Lord, if you delivered us from that, you can definitely deliver us from any and every circumstance that we will go through, Lord, and are going through. Father, because you delivered us before and you can deliver us again, Father, you wouldn't bring us this far just to leave us and abandon us. In your word, you say, Lord, that you will never leave us, never forsake us. Lord, we are your beloved child. We are the heirs to your throne and Father, we know that you love us because you have shown us time and time again. And so, Lord, I pray for every heart out there longing, Lord, to hear your voice, to hear you say, Lord, that you will take over their circumstances and their situations and you will deliver them, Lord, from whatever they are going through. Lord, from illness, from sickness, from disease, Father, from financial difficulties, from marital disputes, Lord, from um, school problems and troubles, from troubles in relationships and in their families, Lord, with everything going on, Lord, politically, Lord, and everything going on in our health system, Lord, we just know that you will deliver us, that you will protect us, and you will shield us, Lord, from any harm, because, Lord, you have done it before. Lord, help us to really dwell on those moments, Lord, in the past, Lord, and bring them into this situation, Lord, and how you handled everything before and delivered us before. Help us to grow in our strength, Lord, from seeing those things, Lord, and knowing and trusting that you will do it again in a mighty way, Lord, different and greater than you delivered us before, Father, because every circumstance, every situation, Lord, that we face, every enemy that tries to attack us <laughs> has to bow down to you, 
There is no power in this world like the name of Jesus Christ. There is no God greater than our God. There is no name above your name, Father. In every situation, every enemy, demon, even the devil has to bow, Lord, at your great name. And Father, we know that you wouldn't bring us here just to leave us. Lord, we know that you have deliverance on the horizon for us. And so, Lord, I pray that we would focus on that hope and joy for tomorrow, Lord, but that we would also focus, Lord, and lay down all of our worries from today. It is okay to hope for the future, but it is not okay to worry for the future. All of our worries need to stay captive to this moment in time, to this day in time. They need to stay captive and be put under the Lord's name at his feet. Lord, help us to continue to grow, Lord, to a place where we can have peace in being still. Because, Father, sometimes I know that we, when we hear the word, be still, our flesh cringes because we are so used to, in this society, working tirelessly day in and day out. But Lord, in your word, you tell us to be still. And even though right now our flesh may cringe and we may not understand why we need to be still, but Lord, as we do it more and more, we know, Lord, that you will give us peace about it. So we pray for that peace, Lord. As we go into those moments, Lord, when we're in our devotional, that is being still in your word. Taking away every distraction to seek you diligently. To even pray, Father. That is being still in you. Whether it be going outside and admiring your beauty in the trees and the flowers of the field and praying to you, Father. That is being still. Help us, Lord, to have the time, to make the time to take away all distractions, Father, and allow us to be still in your word and in your comfort because it's there, Lord, that we can truly see 2020. We can see clearly that you are carrying us, that you are that set of footprints and that we can't and will never be able to do anything outside of you, Father. You give us the strength that we need daily. And Father, right now, I pray for all of those out there who are not saved. Father, you, you are calling to them. You want them to come into your family. We, as Christians, want you to come into God's family. We want you to be in a place where you can be still and know that God is who he says he is. That he is peace. He's a miracle worker, a healer, a deliverer. And he can bring you through every circumstance. But you need to, to give your life to him. And so, Lord, I pray for all of those out there. I am praying for you right now if you are not saved but you want to give your life to Christ. Lord, I pray for them that you would just deliver them, Lord, from all of the troubles that they are going through, from any fears that they may have. Lord, I pray that we would take it captive and put it in your hands. Right now, Father, I just pray that you would deliver them. Help them to feel an overwhelming sense of peace fall on them. Every worry and trouble that they have had right now, Lord, would just dissipate at the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord says to just speak his name, to believe that Jesus died and rose again at his cross and to know that he is the only way to the Father. Know all of those things. Proclaim all of those things. Believe all of those things. Have faith upon those things and you will be saved. Submit every area of your life to the Lord. Come into his place of peace and tranquility that surpasses all understanding. The Lord's arms are open wide. Come to the altar. There's no better place. 
And so, Lord, I pray for them, for their hearts to be restored, Lord, for their spirits and their wounds to be mended and strengthened. Lord, help them in every area of their life where they feel uncertain about what it means to take this step of saying yes to you. Lord, guide them. Bring someone into their life, Father, that you can use, Father, to help them through all that they are going through. Someone that can minister to them, Lord, and uplift them. And Lord, I just pray for all of those out there who may be sick, Lord, who may be hurt, or have a disease or a disorder. I pray, Lord, that you would be their healer. Lord, you say in your word that you are all that we need and more. And so right now, Lord, what they need is to be still. And they need you to be their healer. Father, because there is nothing that they can do. There is nothing that we can do to deliver ourselves from any illness or disease that comes upon us. The only thing that is in our power is to give it to you, Father, because you won't take it from us. Lord, you are there waiting for us to give it, to surrender our control into your hands so that you can truly move. And so, Lord, you are all that we need and more. Be their healer, Lord, their doctor, their counselor, Lord, everything that they need. And Lord, as I said before, every enemy and circumstance and situation has to come under your name. Well, for all of those out there watching who are sick, I want you to remember that even illness and disease has to come and bow down to the name of Jesus Christ. It cannot move unless the Lord says to move. Even in the Bible, when the devil wanted to attack Job and put sickness upon him and death all around him, he had to go to the Father before he could even say one thing or touch a hair on his head. The Lord said, don't touch a hair on his head. The Lord wants to protect us. Even though all of these things around us are happening in our lives in these circumstances, the devil can't touch a hair on our head. He couldn't with Job and he can't with us. These illnesses that we go through are just a side effect of being human. But they, even as the devil had to, they have to bow as well and come into alignment with what God wants in our lives. And the Lord wants us to be healed. He wants us to be delivered and to set free so that we can fully embrace all that he is. But we need to be still. Go into his word for five minutes or ten minutes each day. Father, speak to us as we seek you diligently. Lord, as we, as we are still in your word, Lord, with all distractions around, help us to hear your voice more clearly, Father. Help us to see what you see, Father, in 2020 vision. Grow us, Lord, in our prayers. Grow us in our faith. Grow our families, Lord, to be stronger. And help us, Lord, to be the light that you call us to be in today. And so, Lord, in all of these things, I pray for those not saved. I pray for those who are sick. Father, I pray for all of us watching. Grow us. Help us to be still to take things one day at a time and to remember all that you have in store for us. Give us the strength that we need for today and help us to have peace about tomorrow. And we pray all of these things in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love you all so much. I love you with the love of Christ Jesus, the only pure and true love I know. Thank you for tuning in and listening to this prayer. I pray that it was powerful and impactful in your life. And I ask that you just share it with one person that you know. 
each week as a challenge, share it with someone. Bring a little light and a little prayer into their life. Because the Lord may be moving through you, but just as he's moving through you in these prayers and in the, his scripture, he can be moving that same way in someone else's life. Share his love, share his word, and share prayer. When you're walking down the street, if you see someone and, and you feel in the spirit that the Lord's telling you to go pray for them, do it. Step out of your comfort zone. Be still and walk. Walk to them. Pray. So for this week, my challenge to you is to remember one event and write it down in your journal. This can be your be still moment. One of your be still moments in one of the days of the week. To write down a moment, a memory in time where the Lord brought you through a difficult situation that even then you didn't think was possible to come through. Write that down. And then write down the steps that you saw the Lord working to take um, to bring you through it. And the timeline of how long it took. And so I just... Hope that you guys have a wonderful and blessed week and that the Lord continues to grow you. And all I ask is that you pray, pray, pray every day and worry about the things of today, not tomorrow. Love you guys. Have a wonderful day.